Welcome to NBNR, the authority on unfiltered opinions and authentic player insight for Nebraska athletics. Connect with us on Twitter, Instagram, and at nbnrpodcast.com. We have a saying, no block, no rock. You know, we just really love Otter. He's a junkyard dog. Hey, Kenny Bell ran up to me. He's like, you know what you just, what you just did? <laughs> you get mad. You went to go get in the portal and go to another podcast? You know, usually dumbbells are in pairs. They had five dumbbells. <laughs> hey, gone it, Muhammad. G-B-R. Go Big Red Indeed. No block, no rock. Season 2, episode 40. 4 zero. That season. We are in the Nebraska Brewing Company tap room. 108th and Harrison in La Vista, Nebraska. Where else? Where else? No, where good else, point. Better in the where world. else would we be? Yeah, I mean, we are in our home base. Mike's like heaven studio. Mike's studio is gathering dust. There's cobwebs everywhere. We haven't used that joint in a long time. Hey, it's it's been transitioned to a work office, okay. and <laughs> as, you know, I was gone from work for a few weeks, so cobwebs are building. Okay, I mean, it's getting a little ridiculous, but it's not as ridiculous as your fucking shirt. <laughs> oh, this motherfucker! Go. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Because I like barbecue, beer, and freedom. Yeah, that's what the hell's wrong with you, man? Jared, you don't like any of these things? Jared's rocking this like Walmart cutoff that says barbecue, beer, okay, and first freedom. First of all, <laughs> yeah, barbecue, beer, and freedom. First of all, I got it off eBay for like 12 bucks. Steal. Absolute steal. <laughs> did that it, included the shipping too. Did, oh. did it include the sleeves before? I cut the fucking sleeves off. <laughs> <laughs> I cut them bitches off, dude. This is my my podcast recording shirt no it's not because i know no, that we're not recording right now so i this is my throwaway that's the shirt. first time i've ever seen you wear that <laughs> also i love that immediately he just made the counter accusation of what you don't love barbecue yeah, beer yeah. Or freedom yeah. it's just what the, the hell? First counter accusation the person right wearing them like right. wearing the shirt it just yeah. it does not fit the shoe does not fit you're like a size six and a size 13 it just doesn't fit it's like <laughs> ah, you know no but no not even close I think you look great. I do too, Jared. You Thank keep you. doing your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like those the, that farmers burn with the fucking dude, sunburn and the white and then the more sunburn. I'm telling you, man, I got bug bites and I'm just I can't tell I'm what's struggling. more white, the shirt or his arms. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. All right. You give me shit and I'm drinking your beer and I'm promoting your beer. Hey, that's what I'm here to do. Which I am drinking the cozy cold IPA. I'm co. It's it's hot as a freaking mug outside. It's hotter than shit, but this cozy cold IPA has me feeling pretty good. It's nice and cold, right? Feel, yeah. Do you feel cozy? I feel cozy in my freaking barbecue beer and freedom shirt, <laughs> drinking the cozy cold IPA. Mike, you're well. Just shut up and tell us what you're drinking. <laughs> I saw that smirk immediately. I was I prepared know. for something. I, know. I just did a fucking. Smirk. Uh, Mike's drinking the Eos Hefeweizen. That banana flavored beer. It's yes. good. Yes. It is. No, it's Eos. It is pronounced Eos. Hefeweizen. Yes. 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 The Eos. Excellent beer. It's hot as fuck outside. I sat during the College World Series. 104. Terrible. 104 heat index. Ooh. I have no idea. Sitting on the third baseline in the sun. Bacon. So I smell wonderful. I am drinking the Eos. Feels good. It's refreshing. Mm. That's what I got. It's, it's excellent beer. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned the College Road Series and like the Heat Index. It is a special breed of these dudes. We're watching we're watching the uh, Ole Miss game right now, and it is a special breed of people that sit there in them stands and just fry in those stands. Like my, my <laughs> lord, let's talk about like the Ole Miss jerseys we're looking at right now. All yeah. that dark color, I would be dying with Luckily. long sleeves. Like, why the fuck are you wearing long sleeves? What are you doing, number twenty six? Well, it's two to nothing right now, Ole Miss over Arkansas. So maybe they know something that we don't. Yeah, maybe long sleeves are the key. Well, you know, I don't want to go home and look insane with with uh, farmer's tan, like <laughs> <laughs> pointing to my so right. I, I feel now, yeah, we, we've talked about sleeves twice now. Uh, Jared's lack of them. And they're way too much sleeves. That yeah, has they to should, be this happy medium. The right? happy medium They is should be Kyle. looking like me right now, bro. <laughs> Kyle, you're the happy medium. What are you drinking? I'm also drinking the Cozy IPA. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's all of a sudden like my go-to beer. Like, I love this thing. But what and, happened? And it seems like wow. so recently that getting him to drink an IPA was like so far away. Like, right. it, it was just never going to happen. You remember the Tacrovesa days? <laughs> like, yeah. Like, yeah. like I, I that would them. be pretty good right now on See? a hot summer day. Oh, though. my God. Throw yeah. a little lime in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Holy See? shit. Yep. That and the lemon rattler, just beers of the summer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
So we already know that Connor is drinking the pills, classic pills. We don't need to belabor that point. What we will belabor is this, not sudden news, because we did know about this when he came. Quarterback Casey Thompson, fresh from Austin, Texas, with his little thumb injury. We knew he had this. However, it's something that we haven't talked about. Something that's not come up for a couple months. Until this morning, right? Uh, yesterday. But yeah, okay. it, it got resurfaced again this morning. It hit yesterday. And then we saw um, Talking Head talk about it on Twitter. Not going to name his name because he's a douche. Name names. Come on. Get his ass. Good. But yeah, we tweeted at him. Didn't respond because he doesn't. He's a douche. But yeah, he pretty much just resurfaced that Casey Thompson, his thumb injury is back and he's limited. He's on a pitch count is what they say. Yeah, he's on a pitch count. Yeah. So, you know, it's College World Series time. Let's (laughs) throw a baseball reference out there for you guys. But Casey Thompson on a pitch count where clear cut QB1 going into spring, end of spring, Chubba practiced for one week. (laughs) Right. All spring. Right. (laughs) And now, and it's funny though. Because if we remember, we had Tra- Travis Justice on. Travis mentioned mm-hmm. he's like, "Are you sure, sure? Casey's going to be the starter? Are you sure?" Mike? Yeah, and and a couple other people have kind of hinted at that. Yeah, like, are we positive that Casey Thompson's our starter? Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, personally, myself, like, it was really strong. The whole Casey Thompson is QB one, no question. But I just feel like uh, even before this thumb thing came up last night. I was like, are we? And of course, with Travis doing his whole, like his little side side eye, are you sure? I'm like, is is Casey really the clear cut guy? Because he, Chuba, you know, he had a, he was limited, and he he has a little bit of experience at Florida State. He made that one I, throw in the spring game, and he made that one throw in the spring game. Ooh. And it's like, <laughs> I'm just thinking, Chuba. I'm not saying he has the job. I'm not saying that. But do you guys think with this thump news coming up? Is that kind of a way to maybe excuse KC from not being QB1? And it's just, it, it was a very subtle way of kind of lobbing an excuse out there just in case. I don't know that it's that large of a deal quite yet until we really know like the extent of everything. Right. But I, in typical Nebraska fashion, this could be, like you said, create a little bit of doubt, kind of keep people guessing, uh, not lending or showing everyone your, your hand quite yet. Mm hmm. But I, I don't think it's something that can be ignored. That's for sure. Well, and in the spring, we heard Whipple say, yeah, I mean, we have our we have our guy, it's Casey. But then Scott gets out there and goes, we don't know who it is. And so then it gives you room to believe that there's not a positive QB1, which makes it, it makes me not, like, I can't believe that somebody with Casey's experience down in Texas, his, you know, skill level and like his maturity as a, as a quarterback it makes it unbelievable to me that like he's not your automatic QB one. So I, maybe maybe Chubb is just coming out here with his limited snaps and he just looks great. Like I don't know. I do just want to say just real quick. I I love the contrast between let's let's shove everything underneath. You know, let's not be too obvious with the whole Scott Frost thing. You know, that's Scott Frost. He doesn't want to talk about that that shit, right? But then Whipple's like, yeah, he's QB one, and I just love that contrast. Because Scott tries to keep everything under wraps and a secret, and Whipple's like, "Fuck, are you talking about? He's the he's a starter." So I I just love, and I'm curious to see like as the season proceeds and goes on, it's like, is there gonna be any friction between these two where Whipple's just kind of out there flinging his little dick around with all this info? Like, I, I'm just very curious to see how this dynamic continues. Okay, so I listen <laughs> to you guys spiel a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So this is what I really think is happening, okay? You just talked about it. Whipple's saying, hey, this is our guy. Frost is flexing, saying, oh, we don't have a guy. <laughs> so what could con- or what could actually convince fans that there is a true quarterback battle? <laughs> Maybe the comeback story. Casey having to work his way back from an- a thumb injury that mm-hmm. might make him limited, giving Chubba more number one reps. I think right now this is to confuse Northwestern on what quarterback <gasps> to prepare for. Putting that bug in their ear that it could be Chubba. Do I actually think it's going to be Chubba? That's yes. very unlikely. <laughs> I'm just telling Chubba. you right now. Chubba. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's likely no. at all. Case, here's the thing. Casey Thompson, he's said it. He's been interviewed numerous times. 
he's planning on staying here one year and bouncing. Like he led the Big Twelve in passing last year and touchdowns and touchdowns. I like, I mean the guy he put up the numbers. He says all the right things. He's studying the playbook. I just to me, it's just one of those things you don't want to you know name a starter before it happens. You want to still make it the the room competitive. I think you're telling Chuba too, like, hey man, like, you know, you could win this job. Now, on the other hand, maybe Chuba is lighting it up on seven and sevens right now um, in summer workouts and all that stuff, and maybe that maybe there is a little smoke to the fire. But when you drop the word pitch count in the summer workouts, like, why are we hearing about a pitch count when there's no practice going on? Why is this guy on a pitch count right now? Yeah, and. Like your your point about how they don't want to tip their hand too quickly to Northwestern, but then you're also making the point that Casey Thompson played a shit ton in the Big Twelve. So it's like I just think that's contradictory in in my opinion because it's like Northwestern's already seen a crap ton of Casey Thompson film. Yeah, and so what? Why why keep it a secret? And the same thing with the spring game too. It's like. We've seen Casey take all these snaps at Texas, blah, blah, blah. And he throws, I don't even know how many times he threw in the spring game. Two drives. And it's like, I feel like he should have played a little bit more. Maybe that's just me, but I feel like he should have played a little bit more. And this quote that he says, he says, I like to throw the ball four, five, six times a week. I'll get back to throwing basically every day of the week. Like, of course, I... Maybe we're just making too much of this, and because it's June, June twentieth, it's like I feel like it should be more than that. <laughs> you know, it should be more than two drives in the spring game. You should be throwing more than four times a week. Uh, maybe I'm crazy, and especially considering he doesn't he doesn't have the job yet. Uh, does he? According to Whipple, right. he, he has the job. I think yeah. he does. Right. I do too. I, I think this to me honestly seems just like smoke and mirrors. Like we were talking about, we don't want to show Northwestern too much. I think maybe, like we said, they've already seen so much Casey Thompson footage. They don't, like they know how to prepare for Casey Thompson. Right. It's not like this is really going to cause too much chaos, but I think that's, in my opinion, and you know, it's totally outside of perspective, but to me, it just seems like trying to cause some sort of confusion. And another point, I'm sorry, I'm kind of going to rant here. This staff can't afford to, be cute anymore and try to be secretive with their game plans and we can't let them know what we're going to do, right? You look at game one last year against Illinois. I was just going to say the same thing. Mm-hmm. You were you were losing at one point 30 to 9. And if I recall correctly, I'm sure going up to up to that game, preparing for that game, it was also very secretive. We can't let them know, blah, blah, blah. What good did that ever do you? When you shit the bed at Illinois, this is a critical year. So can you please just can you please just prepare as if you need to win this game and not be cute and secretive and you know, you have to win, right? So it didn't work before. Why is it gonna work now? Yeah, we're we're really good at hiding game plans. We're just not great at developing <laughs> or executing <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Until Mark Whipple, there we go, marking baby. it down now. Maybe I that's did, the that's the difference, well, right? Yeah, that's what we're hoping. Yeah. Well, and and Mark Whipple came out and no bullshit was like, this is our QB one. This is who we're rolling with. Yeah. And and it, you know the the cute shit followed after his press conference when Scott Frost got up there and was Good. like, I bet you Scott was like, Mark, we can't do that. And Mark's like, I don't give a shit. I'm <laughs> yeah. doing it. Shut and up. his socks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, and and to the Illinois point, like. I'm sure preparing for that was difficult because they didn't know what they were walking into. They didn't know how to how to prepare for an Illinois team that they had never seen under Brett Bielema. Brett Bielema right. So, so I, I would imagine Pat Fitzgerald and Northwestern are doing the exact same thing where they're like, shit, man, Nebraska's got 15 new people that's probably going to be starting. And like, what are they going to do? How are they going to look? He's having the same questions that we had when we were talking about Illinois last year. The The luxury that... Fitz has is that he is a lifer at Northwestern and he he can afford to lose this game. He's he'll be fine. Frost not so much. Well, and it's if we just want to touch a little bit on Northwestern too, it's like okay, you're going and you're playing in Dublin, Ireland. Like 
you don't have a home field advantage. Even if you're going to Evanston, it would be close. I mean, close to a home game, right? You'd 50, have fifty. You would yeah. have right. Yeah. Be fifty. Been there a t- couple times. Fifty fifty. This game is an anomaly from what you normally do. So try to keep it as normal as possible, in my opinion. Do you think that the fans in Ireland, like the people who are actual local, do you think they're going to be wearing like soccer jerseys and shit, like <laughs> NFL jerseys? Like, I don't know if you guys have seen like NFL games that are overseas. Like right. those games, you watch like, uh, we'll say we're watching a Patriots game and you got Raiders jerseys, you got Chargers jerseys, you got Chiefs jerseys. I mean, it's just like a scatter of just random fucking jerseys. I will tell you what I do want to hear. Vuvuzela's. Oh, that oh, would be incredible. Mike, in post, in post, you need to insert the Vuvuzela sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to hear. Go! <laughs> That's what I... Maybe, you know, the NFL is global, so we'll probably see a lot of NFL jerseys, yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, I mean, I mean, if that's what you're focused on, Mike, is uh, what jerseys are the Ireland fans wearing? <laughs> well, you're not going to see. Where, I don't think you'll see a lot of that, anyways. I think I'm sure BTN, ABC, whoever the fuck's going to get this game, like they're going to make sure they show the Nebraska fans there. They're going to show the one Northwestern fan the that one. made it. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like, even for the Europeans, because I'm assuming there will be people who travel from Europe that outside of Ireland. Nebraska, and I'm not going to shock anybody by saying this, does have a really large international fan base. They do. Yeah. So I think while I'm not going to say it's like a home game for Nebraska in any way, um, I wouldn't be shocked to see significantly more Nebraska fans there. No, I, I would agree. I, there's a reason that we have been trying to push this Dublin game two years in a row now. It's because Nebraska knows they're going to make good money. There's going to be a good showing there. And honestly, it's, it is an international brand. It's, it is. It is all around the world and even just from our podcast like i can see where people are listening all around the world and there's the the european side of things is lit up like it there are husker fans in europe Shout there are out. people sta- there are people stationed out there mm-hmm. that might be able to make the trip to the game i mean you're going to see a lot of red in that stadium and that's for damn sure yeah i can promise you from experience uh, my time overseas there were a huge number of Nebraska fans on just the little camp that I was on that had maybe 300 people on it, like a bunch of Nebraska fans. So yeah. anybody that's over there, I mean, there, there's a ton of them. And I know the latest, like the latest numbers that I think I was reading was like 10,000 plus people from Nebraska are going to Ireland. So I think it's going to be an easy advantage to, for us in the stadium. Um, but you know, it's just kind of all the other stuff right. around the stadium. And yeah. I'm sure the coaching staff is like, can we not go to Dublin, please? <laughs> I would you, rather go to Evanston. No for, shit. Uh, for the international listeners, if you are going to the game, a really easy way to get noticed, there is some really cool NBNR merch that's available. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. And that will guaranteed get you that's on a good the point. That's hey, a good point. Hey, I met, it back. I met with my dad yesterday on Father's Day, and he was wearing the Kenny Bell NBNR shirt, baby. Yeah. So, so, yeah, it looks real good. <laughs> Shout out to your sister for buying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, honestly, here's the thing. If you guys go to Ireland and you are wearing anything NBNR related, because unfortunately, none of the guys can afford to go all the way out there. Right. But tip your cap to anybody who is going to make that trip. If you guys are wearing any NBNR gear, I promise you we will take care of you. We will send you all kinds of merch. We'll give you all the shout outs you need. Yeah. Uh, plug your business. We'll plug whatever you guys want. If you guys take a picture in Dublin with our gear on, tag us in it. And I promise you we will make true with you. The NBNR care package. That's oh, right. Yeah. Okay, guys, the th- the next thing I want to talk about, since it is June 20th and, you know, we're watching the College World Series and that's like the main thing happening in sports right now, especially around here. Let's talk about the mystery metrics just real quick. I know we touched on it last week. Ah, here, the one good thing Nebraska's really good at hiding. Right? <laughs> right. The details on contracts. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's so much so that they're getting sued. We we don't want to... I don't care about all that, the the legal jargon or let's get... We don't need to get into that. What I do want to ask you guys, though, is 7 and 5 an automatic Frost is back scenario? Yes. Okay. Uh... No, 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 no. Uh, no, you no answered, okay, no. You no, that's good, though. That's good. Yeah. It's good that you that said yes. That was a gut reaction, and I like that. Because I do, you know, I I just want to go around and we'll see what everybody says. Seven and five, seven wins, compared to what he's done before. So I think seven and five is not a guarantee. Okay. I think seven and five and a 
you know, commanding bowl win is a yes. I think the only way that we get a guarantee guarantee is eight and four. Eight has to be the minimum. Uh, obviously, we we do not know the details. That's why we're talking about this. Yeah. But I think to say like Frost, while he did not come into a great program, has regressed every year, and I think my guess is that this restructuring was a pretty big wake up call. It's like, Hey, there's no more of this. There is no get back to where you started and we'll call that a win. No, I think you have to show significant improvement. I think eight wins is the guaranteed you're fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry, Kyle. I just want to say real quick, I'm the guy and maybe I'm different from you guys. I think even five and seven will be enough for him to come back. That's what I think. But seven and five, you have to you have to put yourself in the moment, okay? Sure. Let's say let's say they start off the season seven and one, okay? Everybody's gonna be on cloud nine, right? Seven and one, they're probably they'd probably be top five because you'd probably have a win against Oklahoma in there. But those last four games, man, I'm telling you, Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa. All teams that have given Nebraska fits and <laughs> fits for some time. Fits Gerald. Anyway. No, but uh, no, but no, no, no. These are teams that Frost has not beaten. So let's say they start off seven and one. Everybody's riding high. Then they lose those last four games to end seven and five. Now just just imagine that would be eight losses in a row to Iowa. It would be nine to Wisconsin. Yet another Minnesota loss, and then you know Michigan, they're they're good. I just think seven and five. If if it's that particular scenario, and I'm not saying that's going to be the scenario, but if it is, I can't say that Husker Nation would be totally thrilled with bringing back a guy that loses four in a row to close out the season. That's just kind of that specific scenario I'm talking about. Sure, that's why seven and five is not a guarantee in my opinion. But five and seven might still be good enough. Just based on the context of the season and blah, blah, blah. But Kyle, I hated it. I did not mean to interrupt you, but go on. No, you're good. So, okay. Point number one for Kyle is I don't necessarily agree with Connor on the regressed part of his of his uh, analysis, if you will. Get him. Sure. Get him. If you, look, <laughs> if you look over the years, right, with all the coaching changes that he's had, He's had new offensive coordinators. I mean, he's just kind of letting people go as as the years go on, right? You go and you get absolutely destroyed by Michigan. And then last year, you have a chance to win the game at home. There's there's a lot of different things about that, right? Like Iowa, same way, you're leading it. And there all the games are really close within one score. So I don't I don't necessarily agree that he's regressed over the years. I think that, that he's kind of figured out what he needs to do for the Big Ten. Okay. Mike's shaking his head, okay. and I'm sure we'll hear it. But that—that that okay. is my opinion, and the stats will show it. So like you can it, say Kyle. whatever you'd I like. I like it. I love the optimism. Damn it! All so right. anyway, oh, can't wait. <laughs> so anyway, Mike is shaking. Over if here. <laughs> Mike settled down, dude, let Kyle make his point. If I'm looking at what needs to be done this year, n- number one, bowl game. Number two, you have to be competitive, just like you were last year, one score games. If if you're going to lose, and number three. You have to show that your team is still fighting for you, which is what we saw last year at fucking three and eight, nine, right? But go like Going Iowa, Iowa, last game. Iowa. I yeah, mean, right. like three and nine, you're still you're still kicking the shit out of Iowa for the majority of the game, and then one bad thing goes, you know, goes wrong, and you end still up losing. Lead. Still and, we'll, yeah, when the bad thing happened, we still the lead. Yeah, bad yeah. thing happens, right? But what what I can tell you is that three and eight. How many coaches after three years of losing seasons, four years of losing seasons? At three and eight, how many people come out swinging like Mike, that? Mike, hold on. Let me say, my my point about five and seven being okay, and a lot of people might go, what? You it's because of guys like Kyle. Because he's still going to have, based on the context of the season, there's still going to be guys like Kyle going. With, with once, hope, right? Hope. Hope, right? But yeah. Now, that, I'm not you insulting said. you in any way. I'm just saying that there's still that there's still that huge part of the fan base that we want to exhaust as much frost as we can. So we're not accused of letting go of a guy early like we did with Frank. They still have that Frank hangover that 
and Bo. we have to we have to we, and Bo is not I get, really, well no but frank especially yeah frank that especially we yeah. must exhaust this thing we can't cut it too early or oh. we'll be accused of being a, irrational again oh my god thank god I what? Know. that's okay. a good point <laughs> so first off you said how many coaches uh, how many coaches teams would still fight for them after three losing seasons? How many coaches would still have their job if they're 15 and 29? Has nothing to do with my point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so anyways, let's go back to back to what you guys were talking about. Okay. Let's go back to your scenario, Jared. You're saying, "Okay, yeah, we start 7 and 7 1." 7 and 1. And we lose the, the last four. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's look at 2021. We were 3 and 3 and we lost the last six. Um, I mean, we lost six in a row and that was okay. That's because because they were close. That was okay. Right. Three, you know, finishing three and nine at a blue blood program. That's okay. Mm-hmm. So now let's shift to twenty twenty two. Let's look at the schedule really quick. Okay, Northwestern, maybe. Okay, maybe North Dakota. Fuck, I hope so. Jesus, you know, <laughs> Georgia. I will cry. Georgia you Southern. You'd think. Fuck, I'd hope so. Oklahoma. We'll see. Hopeful, right? Hopeful. Okay, if you look at this schedule at the end, because I don't want to go through the whole thing. Right. If you look at the end though, like Jared was talking about, you got Minnesota. At Michigan at the Big House, Wisconsin, and then finish the game or finish the season at Iowa. Right. Like, if you lose those games, you cannot be retained if you are not winning some of those games. Because in year five, we are talking year five. He's 15 and 29. Gotta remember that. 15 and 29 going to year five. If you lose those games, are you actually making a step forward? You gotta remember all the Mike Riley haters out there. He had a better record than Scott Frost. Scott Frost needs to win 14 more games in a row. That's over a season's worth to tie Mike Riley's winning percentage. Okay? Yeah. And I'm, I'm not a Mike Riley fan. I'm just throwing those stats out there. For it you is guys. what it is. It is what it is. Now, back to your point on the what the number has to be. Mm. I agree with you. I think, <gasps> but I don't think five and seven will keep his job because of these mystery metrics. But I think that six and six will keep his job, which is not okay. That is not okay at a blue blood program. That is not taking a step in the right direction with a easier schedule. We are talking the easiest schedule we've had in probably the last 12 years. We are not playing any of the big dogs on the other side of the conference. No Ohio State. No, no Ohio State. No, no Penn, Penn State. State. Like We are playing Michigan, but we avoided the big dogs on the other side. Finally got a break from Ohio State. Mm-hmm. We finally got the Iowa treatment. And I'm sure we'll go right back to it next year. But I'm just saying, 6-6 six and six will probably keep his job but he, it should not because some people are going to look at that and say oh that's he progress du- he doubled he doubled last bowl game year. bowl game yeah. yeah not a bowl game is not sufficient seven and six and then go back to the bowl game really quick you said okay you know winning seven and five with a good bowl game win yeah bowl games do not meet, mean the same in 2022 as they did 10 years ago sure not wrong opt outs yeah. nil transfer portal all that stuff affects bowl games guys aren't going to risk their their goods if there's no no reward for it. Right. They're, think about good. Casey Thompson. Think about Stefan Wins. Mathis. Think about all those guys. Are they even going to play in a bowl game? That's <laughs> that's what I'm saying. If, if we have a good yeah. season, say we even went nine and three for some reason. Nine and three, ten and two. We make a bowl game, a good bowl game. How many of those guys are actually going to play in the bowl game? We're going to have a successful season. Yeah. Odds are if we have a successful season, that means that the quarterback position played pretty well. So maybe he's looking at playing on Sundays. Well, and we're looking at if if they do go nine and three and ten and two, and those guys opt out, the fan base isn't going to give a shit because that's they true. had a they had right. a good season, so right. yeah. it doesn't they really matter. Anyways. That's true. Right. But yeah. let's let's go back to that six and six, seven and five, eight and four talk, right? You know, the bowl game might matter a little bit. I mean, really, we haven't been to a bowl game in five years, oh, don't six say years. That. We haven't been to a bowl game in six years. Oof. Like that, it's a big deal for Nebraska it's fans. It's pretty easy to. I don't want to say easy because I don't play D1 football, but it's sure. everyone makes one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They give it out like candy, and we haven't made one in the last six years. Fuck, right. we could have gone to one five wins, and we chose not to. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Shout Which out. I was kind of happy about actually. No, I was not happy about that. I didn't want. Wait, that. no, I didn't. Not, want not, that. not even five wins. No, they went three and five. Three and yeah, five. I didn't yeah. want that gimme bullshit. Yeah, no, I wanted the gimme bullshit. Because guess what? You earn gimme bu- bullshit by being great at academics, which Nebraska is. Oh, sure. You earn it by being a blue blood program that they want people watching the games. Yeah, we but bring I, money. I want to earn it. And by I, obviously the program, I want to earn it by being good at football. 
Yeah. Like, and no, I so, get it. I, yeah, I don't want to give me like, oh, you have great grades. No, I want us to be there because we are good at football. But put yourself back in yourself in 2020, right? Put yourself back in those shoes, okay? We come off a really good win against uh, Rutgers. We finally see like Fr- Scott Frost has got it figured out. You know, we have a good win. T- Turner Corcoran plays his ass off. He's the future. We don't need Brandon Hymas. Go back to 2020. Yeah. Like, you're right in that high. The defense was playing their asses off. They, you remember they ran down their freaking throats. Yes. We're finally running the ball with Dedrick Mills. Mm-hmm. Things are going good. And then your team says, hey, we could play in another game, but we don't want to. Like, I put myself back in those shoes, and we talked about it. That was really the beginning of no block, no rock. Mm-hmm. They should have played in that bowl game. And it honestly could have set what could have happened last year. The offense. The offense. Didn't want to play. That's sad. Of all sides of the ball, the offense, even special teams wanted to play and embarrass themselves further. <laughs> He's got an Irish accent. Yes. Yeah, now look, we're talking and about Ireland. Embarrass themselves further <laughs> in Dublin. And Mike, I understand what you're saying. That we should have played in that bowl game, whatever. But I, I feel like, again, I don't want our program to be known as like, oh, those are the really smart football players. And I get that that's a very good thing. That's like we're setting our athletes up for success. That's fantastic. <laughs> but, but. I want to get there because we're a good program. And at the current moment, I don't think any of us at this table are going to sit here and say we've been a good program in the last four years. No, no absolutely and, not. And, I hope not. And I, I think with the bowl game, a, a fan can accept six and six if you are if you win one of those big last four games. Sure. You beat Wisconsin, you finally break that. Oh. Or you beat Iowa, you finally break that losing streak. Mm-hmm. You go to a bowl game, you play well. Hell, you maybe even win. Fans can live with that because it shows progress. We saw last year, we saw the progress. We saw us playing well Man. against... You can't tell me no. you didn't see progress. I wasn't you, progress. You I, say it every week. I have to agree with Kyle here. Dude. We, we made progress. It just... The progress wasn't in the You agree column, with that point was, every other week. It was pretty evident the, that there was progress. The progress the wasn't winning, though. Linning is... We all accepted. We've all said this. Linning is not okay at the University of Nebraska, and it, it never will be. It is not. So... But if, if you want to call that the Linning progress season, Linning can't be acceptable in 2022. The really? close losses do, are not acceptable. If if the question is, did they progress from the year Scott Frost got here and last year? No, they lost more games than the, the year that Frost got here. But did they lose to Michigan by 50 points? No, but they lost more games. My point is, <laughs> look at the stats, Mike. You can't tell me they didn't progress. You can't. The stats don't lie. We played as just of a heart of a schedule as we did that first year. The first year, we were blown out by Michigan. The first year, we had no prayer at beating Ohio State. Last year, we had a prayer at beating Ohio State. We had a prayer beating Michigan. We had a prayer beating Iowa. You can't tell me that that the first year, we did not progress from the first year to last year. You can't tell me that. We got to be careful now because in Frost's first season, you know, he goes out and he destroys Minnesota. Yeah. Then <laughs> the next year, they come with a depleted roster to Lincoln and they kick Frost team's ass. So, like, we just have to be careful with, like, going game by game and being, yeah. oh, they made progress here. In Michigan, absolutely, they did. But at some point when you're three and nine, it's like, damn, can, can you just pull out one of these? Can you just not lose one of these they games. I mean, nine like again, times. And it's just like, at, at what point is it, you know, progress? And then at the other, it's like, well, they keep doing the same shit over and over. How is that progress if it happened nine times? Like, can't you figure it out in between the first and the ninth? I, I agree with both sides here, actually, because Kyle's right. The stats do show improvement as well, a unit. They rack up yards. How, however, the record suggests that while we've improved, uh, so has everyone else, and they're improving at a higher rate. And no, it doesn't matter. It not doesn't matter. But while we're improving, so is everyone else, and they're getting yeah. better than us and remaining better than us. Yeah. And I think that's the most important part. Yeah. Well, and you got to remember too, even in Frost year, like our offense put up big numbers. I mean, we had Stanley Morgan going for a thousand yards. Um, we, uh, Devine Zigmo go for a thousand yards. Keep, we keep, put up numbers. The total it, offense is great. Yeah, it's been great oh, yeah. since Frost has been here. Well, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's it's been, it's been fine. Good. It's yeah. been it's been good enough to where you don't go fucking three and nine. Yes, yeah. right. They rack up like at Wisconsin, right? They 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 Wisconsin allowed the most yards all year against Nebraska, but again, it's the stupid shit. It's the special teams. Yeah, Wisconsin might have got bailed out on the last play. We can't say for sure what would have happened after that, right? But it's just the same dumb shit 
and you can rack up as many yards as you want, but if you go in the red zone and your asshole puckers up when you turn the ball over yeah. or you, you give up a, a score to freaking Crookshank again. Okay. At one point, is it progress and it's just, or it's just the same shit over and over again? So I think what I can say is it's progression in the overall scheme and it's regression in certain little parts. So, I mean, I shouldn't say little because, right, because special teams, special teams wasn't as bad when he first started to where it is now. It wasn't or good. Or 2021. Whereas other parts of his offense and other parts of his defense have gotten better. There's, there's never been a complete progression and a never complete regression. That's, a that's, what, that's what I'm saying. But who's, but who's responsible for that? It's Scott Frost. Thank you. Yeah. 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 And that's that's what it comes down to. We've, and that, that's not something I'm, defu- I'm, no. I'm disputing. I'm yeah. just saying that you can look at this 3-9 and nine from 2021, and then you can look at a 3-9 and nine from 20, uh, 2019, and it's like Four and eight. things have progressed and things have regressed. And so I can agree to that. Yeah. So I think with my point with the whole metrics thing is we have to be very careful. And even Trev himself, like if hopefully he didn't like cement himself to you must win seven. Because he might reach seven, but it might suck getting there and the fans are going to get pissed. So hopefully, like it's not a specific number, but it's more so how it looks. The word that. you're looking for is eye test. Sure. Do you think the eye test matters? If Scott Frost wins seven ugly games, but gets blown yes. out in three out of five or something like that, do you think that matters? Well, it, don't, please you get, don't get blown out. But I'm just, That's yeah. what I'm saying. But so no, what if I've we got, go back to maybe Bo Pliny era where, where Frost... Look Shit, at, maybe yeah. he wins eight games, but he gets blown out in four, right? And he ends the season losing those last four and gets blown out. Gosh, you know, like that, that what brings is that? Us, yeah, no, the optics what does that do? terrible. That brings us back to Bo, and we all sit here right now, and I think we all admit that we look back on the Bo era with bright eyes, and we took him for granted, right? right? And so if that does happen, and we reach that eight or nine, but get blown out in one or two, I mean, he's still going to be here. Yeah. yeah. And especially, I dude, we're bad. We, we've had, we have battered wife syndrome. Like, we're yeah. going to take <laughs> nine wins come hell or high water, dude. <laughs> whoopsh, whoopsh. Yeah. I, <laughs> Give I, me some more. Yeah. Whoopsh, I more. mean, look, that, that's what I'm saying, though, is like, just be careful with the specific numbers. It, you know, it does depend on how it looks. Please beat one of the four or one of the three. That's, I should that's say. what I'm saying. One yeah, of the Big Ten West teams. Please beat one of them once. That's my next big question is we mentioned what we're on could be on a nine year losing streak to Wisconsin could be on an eight to Iowa. Oof. I have a feeling we're all going to give the same answer here, but if you had to choose to end one of those streaks, Iowa, Iowa. Oh, my thinking. Um, I'll say Iowa, but gosh, I fucking hate Wisconsin. Man. I do too. I'm just I, like, but I hate Iowa more. I hate Iowa more because they're closer to us. But if you really think about it, Wisconsin does everything Nebraska used to do good. Alvarez. Like, the Alvarez effect is in full form. And where did Alvarez, where's, where are his roots from? Nebraska. So, like, to me, gosh, it's like splitting hairs I because the, the annoying Iowa fans that are around here, like, I, I get that. that. That's my tipping point. That, that's is, my tipping point. We, you, see, you see Iowa flags flying around and... The, oh, yeah. It's just. Ugh. Let's talk about no, the I, worst I've seen, thing. I've seen zero Wisconsin flags, by the way. I, That's I, true. I will be honest. If we were on a seven-year winning streak on Iowa, I would be doing the same shit. Well, I would. We've be, done that before. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> but not currently. Not currently. <laughs> my thing. The my least favorite thing, guys, is when you see a Nebraska license plate, <laughs> and then oh. you see fucking Iowa license plate cover or Love Iowa it. fucking bumper sticker. People are awesome, dude. Go to Iowa. <laughs> It's 20 minutes away. Go it's fucking right, live there. It's right there. Yes. Go Dude, live there. I, the taxes are better. Go there. I love people, man. People are fucked up, man. I fucking hate I it. I love it. Quit flaunting your shit. Get, go home. Go to your home. Two people just unsubscribed. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> like, please stop fucking flaunting your Iowa shit with your Nebraska plates. I understand you're a resident. Go home. <laughs> you know what's sad is... When we first came to the Big Ten, when people tried to convince Nebraska fans that Iowa, Iowa would be the new rival, people scoffed. It's true. People said, they're not, no, 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 shut up, they're nothing, they're trash. I mean, it took a seven-year losing streak to be like, you know what, fuck, fuck these guys. You know what, it, it's taken that to help Nebraska fans embrace that rivalry, 
And it's kind of sad that you had to lose seven fucking games in a row to them to make you realize, oh, we're actually pretty close in stature right I, now. I them. think we just go full conspiracy theory here. Mm. This was a false flag operation by Nebraska to create that rivalry. We threw those games for the last seven years <laughs> to make sure, Nebraska I wish, maintain Iowa. I wish that was the case. No, this is the year where we turn it back on. We make a real convincing run for the Big Ten. Mm. This is it. We just needed seven years of hatred just to develop. Bill Moose playing 4D chess. Yes, chess. They're playing checkers. And now he's on a ranch somewhere. <laughs> Good job, Bill. <sighs> Mike, you pulled up a a little stat thing. Yeah, what, I just want what you gonna do. I just for any Iowa fans that are out there, I know <laughs> that we live rent free in your house, regardless of you winning seven in a row. But just to set the record straight, <laughs> you still need to win nine more fucking times to tie us. So you, you need to do a Wisconsin streak. <laughs> yes. So we need we you need another you need a Wisconsin streak to add to your Iowa streak oh, to tie us. So yes, recency bias is a real thing. It does suck. My ass still hurts from losing seven times in a row. But remember, 29 wins, 20 losses, three ties. Oh God, the, the era of ties is just something, I'll tell you. But anyways. It could happen, Mike. Rent free. It could yeah, happen. Like, zero natties, they might five catch natties. Up. They might catch up to Three highs and winners, zero highs and winners. <laughs> so they, they need nine more wins to tie the series. Yeah. But like Kirk Ferentz has been coaching there for like 85 years now. He doesn't have nine years left in him. No. Then no the, way. Brian's going to take the reins, though. Remember that, guys. Like the Ferentz era will never end because Brian's he's he's young enough. Like he he knows what he's doing. He knows the, the system. Run the ball, run the ball, play action. Everybody knows what's going to happen. We just can't stop it. And that, like I said, even Iowa does Nebraska better than Nebraska does right now. Yeah. So that's, I hope, I pray to God, but I don't see that happening under Whipple. But I hope that they bring back some of that nastiness where it's like, hey, ISO right. And we fucking run the ball right. And they still can't fucking stop it. Like, Iowa can literally tell you what they're doing and we still can't stop it. Doesn't Wisconsin that, can tell you exactly what they're doing, and we still can't stop that it. That does sound yeah. damn familiar. Man, you remember all those, doesn't it? You remember all those years that Iowa and Wisconsin, the only thing that they ever did was just rush the edge, and there was nothing that we could do to stop it every single year, play by play. Just we couldn't establish the edge, and it was just it was the most tormenting fucking disheartening. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And the thing about Iowa too, and. Travis Justice, shout out to him. Shout out when Travis. He, when he came at, when he came on our pod, he made the point that I was content with their seven, eight, nine, and the guy that succeeds, Kirk, doesn't need to be Saban, doesn't need to be Urban. It could be Brian. Just as long as, as he keeps the the Ferentz model, they're going to be just fine. And if I hear any Iowa fans going. Oh, we could do better than Brian Ferentz. Well, hold on a second, because now you're sound, starting to sound like Nebraska now. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> be careful with that, because you saw the hole that we're fucking in now. Yeah. Well, and we I, got a little greedy. I would like to get um, an Iowa fan's opinion. You know, I, I, Travis said that on our podcast. I would like to get just like a, a random fan's opinion on, like, are you okay with the the seven to ten wins? Like, or are you guys looking in the future like, yo, yeah, we could go to the playoffs? Like, I. I I truly want to know like how you feel about that because look, us sitting in this position right now, we'd be fucking happy with ten wins a year for. They don't win ten, 10 years. Year. Ten, would, ten is would, the best they've ever done. Yeah, ten's the best they've ever done. And I, would, I will yeah. admit, I will, I will say as well, uh, your stadium was still pretty empty. But yeah. you know whatever. <laughs> God, their ass. I would give a foot for a ten-win season right now, but I get to choose which foot. Okay, which one which would you choose? Foot. Probably my left. Why? I like my right. I can kick with it. And honestly, even but you with, won't be able to kick with anything yeah, you if you kick have one if you only foot. got one foot. I can get a prosthetic. Your poor dog. And man. honestly, with a prosthetic and my right foot, I could probably still get on the Nebraska special team squad. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's fucking true. No, I mean oh, honestly, <laughs> if you if you put the range at seven to ten to an Iowa fan, of course they're going to say yes. That ten is like fucking gold for them because they know they'll never actually win more than that. Like they're. Their best season was last season, and they got fucking raped in the Big whoa, Ten Championship. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Brad Banks is pissed that you're oh, saying whatever, this. whatever. Whoa. And how can we not appreciate Connor's fucking joke? <laughs> <laughs> Mike just rolls like a train right through it. Bam. It was good. It was good. But, I mean. Because I'm, I'm just picturing him with a, a, I mean, not, a, a not foot. <laughs> yeah. You know? Just, I mean, shit. <laughs> Just straight Caleb, like firmly, Caleb Light boarding yeah. an onside, just falling over. I bet it still goes yeah. forward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Put a wheel down there. I don't care. I'll make it happen. Shout out Caleb Lightborn. No, never shout. Come him on, out. shout him out. Yeah, <laughs> worst punter we in Nebraska history. Out. It's not going to be a great he, shout. Dude, he has that really cool picture of him jumping up, and every recruit okay. fucking retweets you, that. And I'm like, why are you doing that? If you That's pull the metrics, the it, like, and there's got to be a minimum of punting and kicking. But I guarantee you, Caleb Lightborn has to be one of the worst, if not the worst, punter in Nebraska history. I are you saying that stats I, matter? Always. Oh. But guess what? The number one stat matters. Wins and losses. That's a stat. Yeah. Uh, friendship wants to have a discussion about that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't have a. You can't have. At the end of the game, you look at the stat sheet and you see punting yards negative two point oh. <laughs> can't happen. Caleb, this is not a Caleb Lightmore bashing episode, guys. Mike, terrible. Okay, we just took a little break to top off our beers. Cheers. Uh, I'm drinking a Farrell's Red. Shout out for Farrell's Red. Come check it out in the tap room. But I want to turn it over to Connor really quick. Uh, there is an event coming up that Nebraska Brewing Company is sponsoring. Uh, Connor, you want to talk about it? Yeah, so this Sunday at the brewery, 108th and Harrison, we have the Guitars for Vets PTSD Awareness Concert. Uh, it's from noon to six. It is free admission all ages. All of our proceeds will be donated to the Guitars for Vets Foundation to help veterans suffering from PTSD get some help. Uh, there will be four artists, John Worsham, Gunnar Gannett, Heartland Boogie Band, and then Evandale. Uh, Evandale is a real okay. surpriser for us. We're very excited about it. But yeah, it, it will be here, again, all ages, free admission. Come by, drink some beer. There will be raffles, silent auctions, everything like that. Throw some money and help out. You know, the, the, We don't realize that there are veterans suffering from PTSD all around us. Come down, throw some money, and see what you can do to help them. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Kyle can experience or has some experience with Maybe not himself with PTSD, but he's I'm he's a he's a vet. He's you know he's been places. You want to talk a little bit about that? I mean, I mean, look any any chance you can you can take to support stuff like this, and I, I can tell you from experience is that folks that are are, are suffering from PTSD, um, you know, like getting help is like a weakness, right? And especially that narrative is starting to kind of turn around in the military. But for the for the older generation, the guys that are um, suffering from PTSD, they you don't want to reach out because it shows it shows weakness and and it's something that's a really terrible narrative. But any chance you can you can take to support a cause that that is trying to help out people that are suffering from PTSD, you should support it one hundred percent because I can promise you that they they could definitely use it. So, all right, thank you, Connor, for letting us know about that. Mike, rope us in on the last topic of the night. Last topic of the night. Hot takey, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Nebraska football. Mm. Is there a scenario where Scott Frost will get blown out? And our definition of blown out in a game would be losing a game by 17 or more. Mm. I'll start it off. Start it. I don't envision a scenario where Scott Frost doesn't lose a game, at least one game this year, by more than 17 points. Is there a specific game that you're looking at that has you thinking that way? I mean, an obvious one would be like at Michigan – you know, you're coming off, it's it's a tough Big Ten schedule, and then you're going on the road to the big house in Michigan. Like, to me, I mean, that one has, if we're going to lose, a, at least a 17-point loss on it, but it's you never before. know. It's and, happened before. And just to piggyback on my point, anybody listening that's like, dude, you're crazy, think about this. The offensive line, thin and unproven, okay? I mean, if you have Bryce Benhart playing right tackle and you got Turner playing left tackle, like, we don't know how this O-line is going to look. And if you look that far into the season, there could be obviously injuries. New coach. New coach. I mean, you got a lot of things going on at that position. Mm -hmm. And then you shift to the defensive side of the ball. You got a thin linebacker core behind Reimer and behind Nick Heinrich. There is literally no playing experience. So you need those guys to step up and stay healthy. Like to me, I'm not saying that's going to happen. And God, I hope that doesn't happen. But it's just a scenario where I can envision Injuries are going to happen in areas that we probably don't need because that's Nebraska. We're very unlucky. So I do see a scenario where we could lose a game by more than 17 points. Guys? I, I would agree that Michigan would be the one that I would pick. Okay. I mean, or Wisconsin. With, uh, Wisconsin only if we have a shitload of injuries. I think that I think we've always kind of played them co close. I just... If we have a shitload of injuries, like you're saying, we and it's, it's weird because the, the whole team is put together by transfers 
We have so many new transfers, people that have never played together. Question marks. They, Everywhere. It, it, it's literally just the whole team is the whole offense and the defensive line is just a big question mark. So yeah. I could see I could see Michigan probably being that team if it were to happen. Now, Kyle, when we when Mike brought this up, you got in a very spirited way. Mm -hmm. You said, hell no, it is not going to happen. And this is why I said, keep that freaking energy because you didn't get any, you didn't, you didn't get into any of that just now because you already did. And it's already out. I need you to argue with Mike right now. <laughs> I need you to fight this motherfucker. Listen, <laughs> dude, I can sell anything to anyone. I can tell ice to an Eskimo. He, listen, Mike is a freaking snake. He will get you. Look, okay. But seriously, because you said no, and you gave freaking reasons. You didn't give any. Listen, the, the reason why immediately I said no was yeah. just because of last year's performance. Arguably, we were playing, a v I mean, Michigan made it to the playoffs. Yeah. So we we're playing a playoff team. We had a chance to beat them in the fourth quarter. Blew that, of course. Uh, Ohio State was the same way. We only lost by nine to them. So if I, I figured if if we couldn't, if we didn't get blown out by those two teams within short time period last year, I figured 2022. I, I just couldn't figure that as happening. However, me and Mike talked a little bit about it, and we're like, okay, well, like he mentioned, the the line, both lines are are thin. Both lines are kind of unexperienced and unproven. Half of them have never played together. You get uh, injury at quarterback. If Casey's the number one guy, he goes out. Then you've got Chubba Purdy, who has has slim to none experience playing at the D1 level. I mean, he, he's been practicing, but never played an actual game for too long. He started a game. One. He started, yeah, he started yeah. one game. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of tangibles that if something really bad were to happen to a majority of these players that have never played together, then you're bringing in dudes that have zero experience, and then it's just you're going up against Michigan, who was a playoff team last year, and is supposed to be even better this year, according to Mr. Jim Harbaugh. Um, <laughs> well, so, you know. I mean, you're just asking a lot. You're asking for a lot of things that haven't happened before to actually happen. And all new coaching staff. Yeah. yeah. It's just like... It, well, yeah. you could view that view that as a good thing. It's a whole new coaching staff, so it's I like view that as a positive. Like uh, you don't have the Ryan Eld and Greg Austin, et cetera. So it's like, hey, fresh blood, out with the old and with the new, right? Uh, how, okay, maybe we just close on this last question. Oklahoma comes to town. What if they lose by seventeen, to Oklahoma? How are you feeling about that? I don't know. I mean, really, like once again, we're talking year five, Scott Frost, right? And you played them close, but I in Norman. There, there are also a lot of. I feel like unanswered questions regarding Oklahoma's yeah, roster right now. I would so agree. Like, New head really coach, exactly. Game to like Dylan them. Gabriel at quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, there are a lot of unanswered questions there. Right. I there there are going to be some games this season that we like. It, it's just going to be tough to weigh in on because we just don't know. And I ask Oklahoma because when you look at the schedule, they are probably going to be the most talented team that we play. I don't. They're, know. You're going to see. You I have Michigan. Michigan. I I yeah. You have Michigan, but. Oklahoma's up there. Sure. You've already been blown out by Michigan before. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if there is any year to get Oklahoma, this has got to be right. It. Right. So don't please don't get blown out by 17. Yeah. Right. Well, okay. If you look at Oklahoma's schedule really quick, though, I mean, they play two games before they play Nebraska. Mm. Nebraska will have three games under their belt before they play Oklahoma. Okay. They're going to play UTEP and they're going to play Kent State. So sure. how are you going to gauge that yeah. team? I, how are you going to gauge yeah. what Dylan Gabriel is going to do against UTEP or Kent State? Like That's going to be tough. And it's a new coaching staff. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys left that program. But they did. Re they got a lot of new guys, too. I mean, it is that's going to be a tough game to gauge. I can't wait to bring on a guy that talks a little Oklahoma football. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a nugget for you guys. Let's transition that really quick. Future episodes for MBNR. We are going to be doing a season preview. We are pulling guys from different universities that can talk about the teams that Nebraska is playing in 2022. Mm -hmm. So we're going to bring in uh, someone to talk about Oklahoma. They could answer those questions. Maybe they know. Well, I mean, I would hope they would know more than we do about <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> so that's something to look forward to on MBNR. Uh, we got we got a sweet season preview coming up. We'll probably try to knock out maybe three games in one episode where we bring in three different guys and we we Ooh. preview of the game. So. Hey, that's, that's news to me, Mike. Yeah. That's, I, a, that's a commitment. It's commitment for sure. Oof, I'm scared of that. All right, guys. Please go to our Twitter at NBNR Podcasts. We are posting things there every day. 
awesome content, if I may say so myself. Not biased at all. <laughs> NBNRpodcast.com. We have merch there for you. Like we mentioned earlier in the episode, go buy some, please. And Wear we it in Dublin. It's, it's pretty sharp, man. Come on, it's sharp. Get go that buy care some. package. Get that care. Get that tote bag. Come on now. The tote bag, baby. God. Eric Morrow is now writing for us. Yeah, shout out. Shout out to Eric Morrow. Shout out, Eric. Yeah, Boneyard Banter with Eric Morrow. Real talk. I mean, Eric, for those of you who don't know Eric, I know he's he's been on the podcast and mm. everything, but Eric is one of the most opinionated fans of any sports you'll ever listen to. I mean... Hot take? I, with reasoning? Yeah, I think that's probably a good way to put it. Like, <laughs> That's pretty good. No, check out Eric. Uh, he's writing for the pod. It, it's awesome to have him back. He has He is full of great opinions. He's a king. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's Jared's king. So <laughs> check him out. He's on our website, mbnrpodcast.com. You'll find a, a section on there called Boneyard Banter. Check it out. He's got a lot of hot takey things. Uh, reply. Tweet at us. Tweet at Eric. Five-star uh, review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all those platforms. Subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe. Just yes. do it over. Like, unplug, plug it back in. Da, 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 da. Yes. Hit that download button. Please hit that download button. Yeah. If you don't already, put it on auto download. All it does is help us out. It doesn't do anything to you. Just hit that auto do- auto download button. It helps the pod more than you can know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Let's sign off. I'm one of your hosts, Jared Hall. Kyle Byers. Mike Deller. And Connor Cavillac. And as always, barbecue beer and freedom in GBR. <laughs>